the garden centre. It's a common sight across the country. But behind the scenes of one garden centre in Cheltenham, owner Chris Evans also runs the Butterfly Garden. It's a charity that provides an educational, therapeutic and recreational space for anyone who's going through life along a troubled path. It's a project that started out in 2002 as a single seed of an idea that has now not just grown but flourished into something extraordinary. Fourteen years ago, um, somebody walked with half a dozen children who were autistic and those children had come to see me to ask for some guidance. They were thinking about setting up a garden at their school and I took them across to the nursery um, on the back of the site here, showing them what I did on a day-to-day basis, planting seeds and raising plants. And they got excited and as they got excited, so I got excited and I invited them back. And I brought them over to this area, which was formerly the turning circle for deliveries coming into the nursery. And I suggested to these six students that if they wanted to come regularly, we could tidy the space and create a garden. So here we were working in this space and we've got a student who's had a seizure and we decide we need some shade. So on the edge of the garden behind me, we constructed a shelter into which we could retreat if the weather was particularly hot. What we didn't make allowance for was the weather deciding, having been hot, to turn to bad weather and we found ourselves in the pouring rain. When the rain started, I had an easy escape route which was into my greenhouse. And three days later, when it was still raining, we started to use the space more effectively that we were standing in. And I said, well, we'll do some indoor gardening. And off the back of the indoor gardening, there was an enthusiastic group who didn't want to garden outside ever again. Somebody turned up then with a pile of pots. They said, uh, you're doing all this gardening. We wondered whether you'd like some flower pots for the project. And I said, I would. But unbeknownst to me, their connection was with the Allotment Association. And having taken my request and gone away with it, they sent a lorry loaded with flower pots. It was embarrassing because there were more than I was ever going to use. And so I attempted to recycle some of them. So we're in here and we're gardening and we've got all these flower pots arriving and I realised that we need tools. So I put out an appeal for garden tools so that students that were coming had got an opportunity to use tools. There was a slight misunderstanding. The, um, the tools came, but people brought old tools and old tools became a museum. We haven't got any money. The project is free. It never occurred to me that it should be anything other than free. And people were turning up and saying, well, I don't understand how your project works. There is, there's no charge for anything you do. And so on one occasion, somebody said, well, I, I would be quite interested in doing a car boot sale for you. So I'll organise that. So two days later, he turned up and said it was a disaster. Um, so what I've done is I brought the things from the car boot sale and I thought you might like to sell them. So they dumped in the garden centre and in no time at all, I've created a rummage sale in the middle of a garden centre. And the residue of the rummage sale, apart from some money, was that I ended up with a pile of videos. If you hand a video cassette to somebody who is dealing with autism, they will be curious to know just what it is that makes it work. And when you demonstrate that by removing five screws, you can open an Aladdin's cave, which will be full of treasures, they're keen to do so. In no time at all, there were autistic students stripping down video cartridges to, to release 38 separate components, which when released from their entrapment, could all be recycled. And the word then spread that I was a recycling center. So, Cardboard was turning up and wood was turning up and plastic was turning up. And in no time, what I'd started as a gardening project had moved from being a gardening project to a recycling initiative. Somebody spotting the wood asked whether I recycled wood and I said I was prepared to. He said only, I'm a woodworker, so why don't I come down and work with your students on making something with this wood? The next thing he wanted was a space. So. I relinquished some space in a potting shed. So this was our first wood workshop and off the back of it we had to create three. When they first started, the students wanted to build simple things. So in the, in the first instance, the very first project they committed to, they were making bird boxes. But off the back of it, they started to get to be brave. They offered to take on commissions for other people. And then from this platform and the recognition of a willingness to embrace what arrived at the door, Volunteers were turning up one after another 
bringing new skills. The new skills moving off this platform brought us crafters of all guises. And my next problem was going to be one of room. So at that point, we embarked on a mission to build a classroom cabin. The cabin went up three years ago and was built as a result of the generosity of the community who just kept turning up and saying, could we give you this? We'd like to make a donation. And it's a remarkable building. It's been invaluable to us and as indicated, allows us to deliver a very diverse range of activity on a daily basis. But still there were things that were wanted. More people wanted to work outside. More people wanted to try their hand at vegetable gardening. So we created a vegetable garden. Off the back of creating a vegetable garden, we got people who wanted quiet space. So we built a yurt and we put a yurt which attracts a totally different audience. Somebody looking to chill out, somebody looking to read by themselves, somebody looking to meditate, somebody looking to air or share a problem, they'll go to the yurt. And then out of this building was coming drama and coming music and, and the need to perform, the need to show off in a space. So, so over here we built an amphitheatre and the amphitheatre is used as a performance space and has been used for all sorts of things. We've had puppet shows out there, we've had ukulele festivals out there, we've had choirs visit the site, we've done singing with our own students out on this location. The notion of standing in an open space and shouting is very liberating. So this has been a wonderful accessory. And on from this, so next door we have taken on more land. And as to the future, this is the next step of our journey. It's well underway. This is to be a dedicated arts and crafts building. And the day after it opens, who knows? The next adventure waits.